Hey guys, this is Matt Kaur from ControlPaint.com, and today let's refine our lasso painting. Because if you remember from previous videos, we've made a paint by numbers, and then we took that and we made a block in, and now it's time to get detailed. Now adding detail is nothing new. The reason I'm including it in this lasso series is to show that the lasso is a really versatile tool. In the previous video, it was just a really efficient way to expedite the block in. In this video, it's going to have an entirely different purpose, which is we're adding lots of details. At first, it's going to seem foreign. But the way I think of it now is almost like using a ruler. If you have a pencil and paper and a ruler, you sort of lay the ruler down, and then the pencil can be pulled across it. Now, how you manipulate the pencil is up to you. You could do hard lines or soft lines. You could do a line from light to dark. The ruler is just there to kind of give you some structure. It really doesn't determine exactly what the end result is going to be. Well, this is the same deal. I can lay down a quick shape with the lasso tool and then paint along that hard edge with my gestural expressive strokes. And it was when I came to this realization that it was a huge breakthrough in my process. Because I used to always think of the lasso tool as kind of a clumsy way to draw shapes. There were a bunch of better alternatives. But now that I think about it just as a ruler, it's so much more useful. It just gives me something to paint against. That's it. So when I'm painting shapes that have specific edges, I can just quickly lay down a shape with the lasso tool and paint inside of it, but it's the painting that the viewer is going to see. I'm not going to fill the lasso tool with a paint bucket. I'm going to be painting strokes. They just happen to be inside of a selection. So as you watch me add detail here, I can't give you an explanation of why I'm making each individual brush stroke. What I hope you notice is how fluently I'm using those keyboard shortcuts, being able to add to a selection, to subtract from a selection. These things have to totally feel natural. In fact, I think the lasso tool is really only useful if it feels like sketching with a pencil. If you don't really feel like you have control over it, well, then it's no use. So adding all these details is really only possible because I'm fluent with those keyboard shortcuts in the tool. But if you're watching carefully, there's really not all that much difference between what I'm doing now and what I did in the block-in. I'm just zoomed in further. I'm making a shape, I'm then switching to the brush tool, and then I'm painting inside that shape over and over and over. It's really no different. Structurally, it's different because I had to establish the colors of the whole canvas before it made sense to dive into these little details. But as far as the technical process is concerned, this is exactly the same. But using only one tool like this is really more of an academic exercise than a practical workflow. Everything doesn't need to have a razor sharp edge. Here you see I want to soften up that transition between the water and the sky, so I'm just going to use the smudge brush. I would never just use the lasso tool. It's really just more of a demonstration here. It's used best for things with hard edges, and so if you have something with very soft edges, it probably doesn't make a whole lot of sense. But like any tool, you have to get used to it before it's useful to you at all. So in that respect, it's actually a good idea for you to make detailed studies like the one I'm doing here and try and just use the lasso tool. It'll feel weird, it'll feel awkward and forced, but if you can do a few finished paintings with just this strange tool, you'll be amazed at how naturally it starts to fit into your normal painting process. In fact, the entire impetus for this mini-series in the lasso tool came from when I did 21 days of one-hour paintings. And the limitation I gave myself was to paint on a single layer. Well, I quickly realized I had edge control problems. I'm so used to using multiple layers that I needed a solution for getting edge control on a single layer. Well, lo and behold, I started using the lasso tool, and it allowed me to make pretty sharp paintings even though I was only using a single layer. But then after those 21 days ended, I kept using the lasso tool. It was something that I totally avoided before, but then once I forced myself to use it, it became clear how useful it could be in certain situations. So I don't use it as much as I use the brush tool or the eraser tool, but I use it a lot more than I used to. So hopefully you can learn from my mistake and start learning the lasso now. It's a lot more powerful than you think. Thanks for coming to the site, guys.